Hey, everybody. Store Capital's pending acquisition is almost guaranteed at this point. The go shop provision in the deal has transpired. Shares are trading for pretty close to the buyout amount. I've already sold my shares and moved on. And a lot of you watching this video are probably thinking about doing the same thing. I'm Jason Hall. This is The Smattering. And I'm going to talk about three of my favorite real estate companies in this video and why you may want to consider them to invest your store capital proceeds or maybe just some spare cash that you have into right now. But first, I just want to thank our sponsors at The Motley Fool. We've got a great partnership with The Fool, and we get to make these videos because of that partnership. They've helped me become a better investor. If you want to become a better investor, go to our link, fool.com forward slash the smattering, put in some information, and the fool's going to share its 10 best stocks to buy right now with you. Okay, let's get right here to it. I'm going to share a couple more slides as we go through this. First thing that I want to share is that, again, that go shop provision, that period has expired. So now shareholders can pretty much expect to get that $32.25 per share in cash once the transaction closes. Like I said, they're anticipating that it's going to close in the first quarter of 2023. So we have a little bit of time before the deal does close. With that in mind, there are some of you that might be thinking about making the move right now and selling your store capital that actually might not want to do it. And that's because of some potential tax implications. So I'm going to share another chart right here. I hope I'm not driving you crazy with all these screen shares, but sit down because there's a bunch of them coming your way. Here's the thing. Tax law in the U.S. If you're a U.S. investor and you own store capital in a taxable brokerage account and you bought shares basically any time from mid-February all the way through the, the, the day that that deal was announced, you're showing a gain. You bought that stock for less than it's trading for right now. What that means, if you sell right now, you're going to realize a gain on that transaction and it's going to be a short-term capital gain. Again, if you hold it in a taxable brokerage account, you're a U.S. investor. What does that mean? That means that the gain that you make on your store capital proceeds that you realize is going to be taxed at your marginal tax rate. What is that? That is the highest tax rate that you pay on the dollars that you earn. So you need to know what your marginal tax rate is take a look at it, think about those implications, and then decide if it makes sense to sell or it makes sense to wait for the deal to close. They're saying it's going to close in the first quarter. So if there's a chance that could get you over the finish line and move this to a long-term capital gains rate where you're looking at 15% um, capital gains tax, that might be the smartest thing for you to do. Now, if you're not in that situation or nonetheless, the tax implications are not significant enough that you want to wait. Let's talk about some stocks that I think you should buy. And the first one, this is one that I use some of my proceeds to buy, and it's realty income. Okay. So first of all, realty income stock is still down about 22% from its high back before the pandemic. So you go all the way back to early 2020 to get to realty incomes price, um, high price, prior high price. Now, what makes realty income really interesting to me is that this is essentially the kind of business that store capital was trying to grow into, right? Now, the other thing is you look at realty income, and for the long term, this was a market beater before the pandemic. It was consistently a market beater before that period. The market absolutely trashed its shares, and the stock has struggled to return back to those sorts of gains that we saw before that. But again, I think we can make the case, considering you can buy the stock now, earn a dividend yield almost 4.8%. They've grown the dividend multiple times since the uh, pandemic. They've continued to grow their business. I think there's a clear case to be made that store capital is going to return to being a market-beating investment. Again, this is where the company is now. It's an S&P 500 company. It's one of the 10 largest REITs in the world. It's a dividend aristocrat. They've grown the dividend every year since listing in 1994. They pay a monthly dividend. That might be attractive to some investors out there, so I want to mention that. Again, 
You think about the fact that there's a $12 trillion total addressable market for a net lease for the kind of market that they participate in. There's a tremendous opportunity to continue to compound this business and to grow it larger and larger over time. So again, realty income, if you're looking for really, you want to own a business that's very similar to the sort of assets that store capital owned, I think realty income has to be, has to be at the top of that list for you. Now, up next, I'm going to make the case for another retail REIT, but one that participates in a different sort of business. And that's Tanger Factory Outlets. Okay. It's a really interesting turnaround story. If you go back to before the pandemic, again, I'm kind of using that as the starting point for some of these stories. This is a business that had turned around. It spent the three or four years before that. It was had really struggled. It had taken on a lot of debt. It grew too quickly. It ended up with a lot of not really good real estate assets in its portfolio, but they spent that few years before the pandemic addressing that. They fixed the balance sheet. They sold off a lot of underperforming assets. And frankly, that's the reason they were able to get through the pandemic essentially unscathed. You look at the business today, what you see on these slides, that nearly 95% occupancy rate, that's a really strong number. You look at the sales per square foot, $450 a square foot. Back before the pandemic, it was in the high 300s. They continue to grow that number. They continue to grow net operating income. They've had a good history of being able to grow their rents over time too. One of the things that I really like a lot about Tanger Factory Outlets, you might hear it and think, wow, this is retail, this is malls, this is terrible. Those, these properties have remained in very, very high demand. One thing is that we know that shoppers like a bargain. They tend to prove relatively resistant to recession even when that happens because, again, people like a bargain. They're looking for value. They drive a lot of traffic. And as a result, it's a really important business as part of the omnichannel strategy that brands take, right? That, that strategy approach. So I want to talk real quickly about what you're getting when you buy the business. Again, you buy Tanger Factory Outlets. There's a record of growing that dividend. They, they slashed it before the pandemic to preserve cash. They've gone back to growth mode with that dividend. At recent prices, you can lock in a yield above 4%. And I think you're getting a business that's absolutely in growth mode going forward. We're going to talk next about something that's completely different. You saw there, I pulled up the the, the uh, Y chart for Blackstone. So we're going from a couple of REITs, and now we're going to an alternative asset investor, Blackstone. And you might be thinking, what are you, what are you doing here, Hall? You're, you're, you're going off the reservation. You're going AWOL. You're getting outside of the real estate focus. And the reality is that that's not the case for Blackstone. Blackstone, yes, it's one of the largest alternative asset managers in the world. It has hedge fund operations, private equity, all of those different buckets that these alternative asset managers do. It's also one of the largest real estate owners in the world. Real estate is kind of the cornerstone of its business, okay? So that's why I think it's a really attractive business. If you really still want to have real estate exposure and you're looking for a beaten down opportunity, Blackstone, I think, is worth taking a look at. I'm going to pull that slide back up and I'm going to talk through some of the metrics here. So again, the stock is down substantially. You see the purple line, the stock is down, I don't know, what is it, down 38%? Yes, down 38% over the past year. That is significant. As a result, the dividend yield has been pushed up substantially. It's almost at 5.4% at recent prices. That is a really, really strong yield. Now, I want to point this out, though. I think this is important, too, before we move on to making the case for Blackstone, is you look at that dividend, the long tail is growth. But from quarter to quarter, it is variable, all right? So you have to think about that. If you're an income investor and you're buying this for the income it's going to generate now, you got to budget that in. You need to understand that the dividend will be variable from period to period. Now, I'm going to make the case next for another reason Blackstone is really compelling. REITs, those real estate investment trusts, the others that we've talked about, the dividends, those are pass-through entities. They don't pay corporate income tax as a REIT, but you pay a higher tax if you own this on your dividend if you own this in a taxable account. Generally, that dividend is considered um, taxed at your marginal tax rate. Again, that highest tax rate. So think about that. With Blackstone, it used to be a publicly traded partnership. Now it's a corporation, okay? As a corporation, its dividends are gonna be taxed in two separate ways. First of all, a substantial amount, this is from the August dividend, was taxed, the majority of it was taxed as a qualified dividend, meaning that it's taxed at that 15%, for most investors, tax at that 15% long-term capital 
gains rate. If you, again, you own this in your, in your retirement account, that none of this matters. But if you own it in a taxable account, this is important stuff to consider. So again, you pit for the for that qualified dividend, that's at your long-term gains rate. Now, return of capital, that's what ROC stands for. This is a non-taxable event. So that dividend that you earn, that piece of the dividend is not taxed. However, this is important. It does lower your cost basis for the stock itself. So what that means is every time you get that return of capital, your broker is going to lower your cost basis. So when eventually you sell the shares, your cost basis will have been lowered by that. And eventually you will be taxed on those gains based on that. So that's worth thinking about as well. So just to summarize all of this, again, you've got store capital, you're selling it, taking advantage of the market dislocation to reinvest in some other real estate focused businesses that are beaten down. I think there's a really good case to make again for realty income to be made for Tanger factory outlets and to be made for Blackstone is great replacements for store capital in your accounts right now.